Welcome back to another episode of Sports Medicine on Tap. My name is Brandon Align. I'm sitting at Neck of the Woods Brewing Company in Pittman, New Jersey with a full crowd tonight with my good friend, Dr. Frey. And we're welcoming back another one of our returning guests, Dr. O- O'Donnell. I was going to say O'Connell. I'm so sorry. O'Donnell. Um, Welcome back, Kevin O'Donnell. <laughs> now, we're here. It's uh, the beginning of February. We just got over Groundhog's Day. And like yeah. the famed movie, it's going to seem like we're doing a little bit of a repeat tonight. <laughs> but man, has things changed in a week for us and our topics and things that we've been talking about. Um, we were joking around last week how you don't want to be... Like the, the most popular topic right. on the show. Right. And then and, and as we're joking around about that, the following week we're yeah. back again. Yeah. And I mean, within hours of last week's uh, episode being recorded and then it got released on that following Friday, that night Joel and B got hurt again. Yeah. And yeah. we we were we went down the wasn't the, pretty. Went down the rabbit hole and speculated on a bunch of stuff and then he got injured again. Now we're here. And we're going back back to the well again, like we said earlier. Going back to the well. And uh, we're going to dive deep into this meniscus injury, the surgery, what it, what's the outcomes look and all that stuff. So I think some of the, the, the very curious things about this particular one was uh, just sort of the way the information was kind of released. Right. The way that he had gotten injured and the, the mechanism of injury in terms of the injury that's being treated. Right. And then the sort of timeline that was shared you know, like sort of, the, it was pretty vague. Like, well, how long were we going to expect him to be out? And right. the timeline that was shared in the timeline that we're getting right now mm-hmm. after he had surgery just this morning. Like, like right. we record on Tuesdays, but the, the surgery was just this morning. We don't have access to his own to his medical records. We're right. just doing the best we can based on the public information. We're right. not revealing anything specific about him that's not public. And we're just talking mm-hmm. about their injuries. So then we brought back uh, Doctor O'Donnell. Yeah. Um, to, to help us sort through all of this stuff. Glad to help pick it apart with you. Yeah, man. Oh, man. We're Thanks gonna, for being here. Yeah, for real. So, again, a quick rundown. You know, Joel Embiid's been a hot topic of our, our show multiple times. Yeah. Um, he was our premier guest or topic of interest, topic, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and be great if he yeah, was our yeah. guest. Oh, yes, man. <laughs> Once. I don't know <laughs> if our pull. cameras are going to be tall <laughs> enough to get him. Yeah. Big <laughs> pull. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to try, though. Why not? Um, but, no, so, you know, this left knee that we're going to talk about, it has a little bit of a history. Um, we kind of dove deep into it a little bit before March 2017. He did have left meniscus surgery the first time. Following that, he wasn't really on the injury report too much for his knee. And then we were just looking up before the show, and it looked like in 2019, he missed about 14 games with that was just classified as rest and a sore left knee. Oh, so um, that was there. And then two years after that, 2021 in April, was when he had that left knee hyperextension and bone bruise. And then June 21. Show number one. Yeah, show number one. For show us. number 10, he had a right meniscus tear <laughs> in his, well, his right knee. Yeah. And then um, show number 71, he injured that right knee again with an LCL sprain. And then last week, show number 92, he had this knee swelling, had this ominous injury reporting. And I think yes. the Sixers got investigated a little bit and fined because he wasn't on the injury report for that uh, Nuggets game in Denver and was reported to be it's out. It's interesting they got fined for it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I guess in regards to NBA, I don't, I don't have any insight how they do their injury reports and stuff. But you know, they they he was completely off of it, and he was trying to, his hardest to play, and then he got pulled last second from right. the medical staff because he looked like crap to say the least. And, and I guess I can see from the NBA standpoint, they should, they could have like he should at least be on the radar, you know, for that uh, if that was the case. I'm guessing that you know that's how it shook out, and that's right. why they wind up getting fined. Yeah, yeah, disappointing. And it's like, you know, so then he, he sat out that Denver game. And he sent out the following game in Portland. And then <clears throat> last Tuesday when we recorded, they were scheduled to play Golden State Warriors. Um, he was a game-time decision going into the game. And I think, you know, we, we, the game was at 9, 10 o'clock. It was on the West yeah. Coast, Eastern time. And uh, by the time we got home from recording that night, I yeah. checked the inf- information. He wasn't on the injury report then, so it's like he's got to be playing, right? Yeah. And man, was that hard to watch! It was. Yeah. It was. Did you, did you did you watch that game? I saw the highlight after. Yeah. No, it's a West Coast game. I'm far asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so it was still on. I I have the terrible habit of like, especially on these nights, right? Like, yeah. I love it. We finish up we finish up office hours. I come down here, have a couple of beers. We go through we go through the show. We record. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. And then I tried to get some of my charts done. So I had the game on in the background. Yeah. And I, I was watching. It was bad. <laughs> like it was a little bit of a train. First, you and I were texting like. We were like, did he just get concussed and he's yeah. still out there? And like, then he's like falling down and yeah. like his knees giving way. And 
like what is he just what is he doing out there like and I, I hate to say I don't normally go down that road but it seemed a little bit egregious at that point they were losing I guess the game wasn't completely over right but they were losing and like I just surprised he was still out there for yeah. the injury and you know it's like tough right like he's the face of the franchise he's yeah. our guy right and he's out there busting his butt still like he got Fred injured on a loose ball you yeah. got those those, those Diving on the floor or those hustle plays in basketball which is always gets scary right because then you just get bodies rolling just diving at each other yeah and that was kind of the case with him he was on the floor almost like kind of seating on his butt with his legs extended out and then the other center um jonathan Kaminga from the warriors just kind of lighting it up yeah got tripped up and he ended up just pretty much falling straight Literally, on it could have been anywhere on his MB. It could have been on his head. It could have been on his hand. Right. But I mean, it was right, right on that on left knee. knee. Yeah. yeah. And, like, and, but, and you know, we were talking <laughs> a little bit right before before we started recording, and you know, I guess he wears kind of these big like there's kind of big soles on his mm-hmm. shoes, shoes and whatnot. So his knee is lifted up off the ground. But like, if I'm laying there on the ground, the back of my knee is on the ground or pretty close oh, at least. Pretty right. Close pretty close. To it, right. But he, there was like a you know a three or four inch gap between his yeah. knee and the ground, and you see like it's like. Ugh, you and know, once he got landed injuries. on it, touched the ground. And yeah, they went you down. See, yeah, it goes the other way and yeah. touches the ground. And you know we were, we went through the whole kind of sky is falling sort of approach right. in last week's episode, right. concerned about you know like is his knee worse than 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 maybe we're being led to believe right now, and you know what does this mean for his knee? And the, one of the first things I thought was like if he's got a gap like that, has he lost extension? If, he, if right. he's lost extension. <laughs> is he arthritic? Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say, but that's right. one of the thoughts that I had. Yeah. And I hope that's not the case, but then kicking it over to Kevin. Yeah. Watching that injury, watching someone fall on his knee like that and kind of forcing him into hyperextension again. Would you consider that to be a common way to tear your meniscus? Absolutely not. So yeah. that I think that's the most interesting thing about the whole Embiid right. issue going on right now, right? We know he's having left knee issues going mm-hmm. into the game. He doesn't look great, right? Right. They're trying to play him through it. Obviously, there's a lot of controversy around this whole 65 game thing. Right. But they put him through it. Now he has this injury. He gets rolled up on. Yeah. I have never seen a patient get a flap tear, meniscal tear from a hyperextension injury. Right. It's odd. Ever. Right. So, very odd mechanism of injury. So, when you look at it, it seems more like he had the lateral meniscus mm-hmm. tear. They're mm-hmm. trying to manage it conservatively, see what we can do with this. Now he gets rolled up on, has a hyperextension injury. Probably didn't change the meniscus tear at all right. during that injury, but now he's out right. and having surgery for the meniscus. Right. And then he was swollen at that point. He had yeah. already missed a few games at that point. And that was, like we said, that was he had surgery in 2017. Yeah. We figured out, we're doing our little, little bit of research here, right? Mm-hmm. He had played 30-something games that season, yeah. then was out the rest of the season. Right. But what does that tell you in terms of... What happened when he had that surgery in 2017? So the two, that's what we're, we we're kind of speculating on a little bit. I, I did find something, but who knows? You know, you're digging through, like, news articles from 2017. Right. Where they say they removed a small piece of the meniscus. Which sounds like meniscectomy. Sounds like meniscectomy, right? right? But if you're having a simple knee arthroscopy, even if it's a, what we consider simple with a partial meniscectomy, yeah. it's an earlier return to play time, earlier right. return to sport, yeah. easier recovery, easy weight bearing. Yeah versus a meniscal repair right right with our meniscal repairs depending on the style of tear the way we fix it and you put weight down but the recovery timeline is much much longer so your return to sport is is measured in months right not weeks right and so for him to miss all of that time in 2017 yeah begs the question was there any repair work at that time that was done and if there was you know as much as we try to fix things back anatomically and make them perfect right they're still certainly more susceptible to future damage afterwards so Yeah, and I think we kind of talked about that, too, before about the 2017 season. That was, like, one of his first seasons actually playing once he got drafted in, like, I think 14 or 15. 14, he, yeah. He missed those first two years. Ten with, years ago. Right, which is crazy. <laughs> like He missed those first two seasons, essentially, with foot surgeries right. and other things. So then you get your guy out there, and he's playing pretty good, and then he has a meniscus tear, and he's like, oh, man, we got to be super conservative with this because we don't want him to miss more time. Yep. Or kind of do what where we're at now, right? Like kind of manage it conservatively and then something else happens to it and then you're going to end up getting surgery anyway. To me, the, the two injury thing that I think is going on right now, it's, kind of, it's just interesting in that when you look at it from a sports medicine, like a team mm-hmm. physician perspective, right? You have, you have this ongoing meniscal tear that you're trying to see. Can we get them through the season with? Right. 
and now you have this new hyperextension injury. In isolation, these are treated totally different. Right. 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 And so the combination of the two and then to address the meniscus there that you're already treating conservatively mm -hmm. while this hyperextension injury is going on makes you think, were they thinking, OK, you're going to miss some time from this hyperextension injury anyway. Right. right. So why don't we, while you're out, take care of the meniscus, take care of the meniscus yeah. while you're out. Let's just get let's just knock this thing out because you're not coming back for a couple of weeks anyway. Right. right. Seems bald, man. It does. Right. <laughs> that, that's what I'm, it's like. Uh, right. uh, it just seems like a, a pretty. I don't know, aggressive call, but... What was the yeah. first thing you thought when you saw that mechanism, when you saw that guy land on his knee, before we had any information about, you know, meniscus tear, and knowing, like, and then he's rolling around, he's in a lot of pain, and, and knowing he's going to be out after that. You're oh. thinking ligamentous injury, yeah. for sure, yeah. right? So hyperextension like that. Right. You're thinking more about the ropes, not right. necessarily the shock absorber. Right, so. <laughs> right, right. And then, yeah. you know, is this just another hyperextension injury, capsule, or or did it actually, you know, go through and his ACL pop, you know, like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you don't want to see any of those options kind of play out. Heck but man, no. but then like, you know, with a lot of other things too, like we said last week, I think was like, he's coming off his injury, he's got the swelling and that swelling just fills up the space. So that space is now limited True. in what you can do, mm -hmm. whether it's be bending, extending, like we talked about, like the lack of extension he could have had. Very good point. His knee could have been at three inches off the ground because he didn't have that couple and degrees of uh, extension just because yeah. of all the swelling. Yeah. Again, we don't, we don't know, extension. we yeah. don't know this stuff, but this again, just doesn't add up of like, like you said, knee hyperextension, you know, you see them, we see them all the time. Right. And we're not sending them for surgery yeah. like right. right away. It's like very rare unless there's like, like we said, the ligaments are damaged or stuff. And he's had that before and got lucky with no ligament damage. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can't, lightning doesn't strike twice in that lucky sense of like, yeah. I don't know. Assuming it is, you know, it's just, it's just a weird sort of mechanism of action for, for this flap tear of his meniscus mm -hmm. as they, as they had put it. Um, and then they're talking about, Time off, like like how much time is he going to miss? And they're saying, you know, two to three months, uh, that kind of a thing. And they're putting like uh, pretty, pretty, pretty decent numbers out there. It could be the rest of the season and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And now, now they're coming out and they're saying, you know, four weeks. You know, maybe it's going to be more, but they're saying four weeks. Can you go into a sort of like different tear treatment options and why that affects the variability? You touched on it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, I, when we look at the meniscus tear, so we know he has a flap tear, but just you know, for completeness' sake. When we're looking at meniscus stairs, we look, one, what can we do with it, right? Mm -hmm. Can we fix this thing down or not? And one, where is the, or two, where is the tear located? Right. So the big, the top three are, are these more like complex or a flap tear. It's a different style configuration tear, one that doesn't necessarily lend itself to us sewing back together, mm -hmm. the right. meniscus repair. You can, but it's a little bit trickier to get them to heal down predictably. Right. So one is this more complex tear. Number two is a tear that's more on the outside of the meniscus where you got a little blood flow to it, right. where we can sew these things back together more predictably. And then we try to repair those at all costs, right? Okay, so that's yeah. a meniscus repair. The problem, or not problem, but the, the, the downside of a meniscus repair, especially for a professional athlete, is it takes a lot longer to get back to play because right. now we need that meniscal tissue to heal itself together. Mm -hmm. right. We can't stress it as it heals. And we have to go through a much more prolonged recovery phase to get you back to your normal performance level before we can release you. The third tear type would be certainly unusual for somebody that's you know, a, a younger athletic individual would be a, a root, right? We see these roots yeah. in conjunction generally with ligamentous tears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A root tear is the meniscus attaches to the tibia. It attaches down to the bone. And so if you actually rip that attachment mm. off the bone, it is catastrophic. Functionally, it's like you have no more meniscus. It's right. like your meniscus is gone. So right. they have to be fixed or you will absolutely get arthritis on yeah. it. And, so, and pretty rapidly, two to three for, years. Ago. Exactly. It, it's, we, can, we can watch the breakdown in real time right. on x-ray. It's, right. it's mm -hmm. insane. So yeah, so you got those three, right? You got the complex one, you got the one we can sew back together, and then you got the root tear. Doesn't have the root tear. But then we have all this kind of speculation out in the news. Well, looking at a four-week timeline and recovery, maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. We're not sure. So that, you know, as we were talking, this is probably more of the clean out than repair, right? Because right. repair, again, yeah. it's measured in months how long yeah. it's taking to get back. Yeah, when they, when they were saying that could be season ending, you know, I guess it depends on what they find when they're in there. Does something worse or if it, 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 you know, his knees all beat up and terrible. Could be three months, could be, you know, like they, they, I think at that point in my mind, I was thinking, uh, they must be thinking root. I mean, not root, I'm sorry. They must be thinking repair. Repair, Because yeah. it kind of goes into that category, mm -hmm. but it really does sound like like they went um, they went clean out. They went partial, like the partial minus second. Yeah. Treatment. You know, the thing that you have to put in the context too with Embiid is we already know he's had 
a prior meniscectomy, meniscectomy on that side. We right? think. We think. We, had, right. we know we had meniscus surgery. Yeah. For all we know, this was retear of that repair. Yeah, it could be, right. right. And, exactly. I, and I believe it was his lateral, too. I'm right. looking. So we know the higher percent of meniscal tissue you take out, yeah. the higher likelihood of arthritis on that side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We also know that lateral always behaves worse than medial. Yeah, it does. Right. So if you're in 2017, you're the face of a franchise. We already took out some of your meniscus. Yeah. So we've already bumped up that arthritic progression risk a little bit. Right. Second meniscus tear, not that much meniscal tissue left, depending right. on how much they had to take out. Yeah. Do you really want to take more of it out? No, you that, don't. That's, that's lateral side of compartment arthritis, yeah. death nail every time, right? Yeah. So if you can fix it, you fix it. But if it's not amenable to fixation based upon the tear configuration, then you got to yeah. you got to take it out. Sometimes you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Sometimes. Right. And I think, you know, with that too, is I think that on top of it being private health information, and like we always say, is that like, I would imagine he got injured on a Tuesday night and they were saying he got MRI the next day. Or the next. I'm sure that thing was lit up like a Christmas tree with all kinds of fluid, inflammation, right. and the signaling all crazy. It's like, well, I don't know what we're doing. We're just going to go in there over the best because, yeah. I mean. We'll take a look around. Yeah. yeah, like, I'm sure they have the, the highest standard of MRI utilities and whatnot. But, like, I'm sure it looked like a mess. Right. Yeah, you know, sure. and it's just like. And then they, they report today after. It's like, oh, well, we're re- reevaluating four weeks to see what he's, yeah. how he's doing. And I think that's just like a little bit of media play. Of like, oh, it's ho- hopeful, four weeks. And then yeah. it's like, oh, maybe we'll just keep adding four weeks to it. And, keep, you know, yeah, slow it down. Slow it down a little bit. And I think that, you know, optimistically, I would love to see him back sooner. Yeah. I would love to hit that four. Oh, man, he's coming back. But realistically, I don't think it's going to happen. Four and 11, is that what we said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without him? Uh, yeah, I think in the last so six good. of the last seven without him, they, they lost. I mean, granted, that night without – Without him against the Nuggets, they looked decent. Oddly enough, I mean, I think it was because the Nuggets weren't prepared to not have him in there. Right. When you spent yeah. all the time preparing for your former MVP of the league, and right. he's not there all of a sudden, it changes the whole game plan, right? right. Like, wow. I wonder, I wonder how much when we we touched on this, and I think a lot of a lot of like media outlets across the country are actually touching upon this. But I wonder how much the the game requirement. Mm-hmm. Um, like minimum game requirement for the MVP award played into decision making for like, all right, let's let's just try to get through it. Let's just try to play. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. You, you hate to say, you hate you hate for that to be a factor in this decision making process. Mm-hmm. And you won the MVP last year. You like to think it's like, you know, I checked that box. I'm golden. I don't need it. Of course, it'd be great if you won it again, but I don't right. need it again. Right. But was he pushing us to get back out there quickly and trying to play through? Clearly, he was not himself. Yeah. Uh, against Golden State, is he, is he doing it just because he's wants he wants to do everything he can to help his team mm-hmm. win, or is he doing it because in the back of his mind he also doesn't want to miss a game? He right. also wants to make sure he makes his push for the MVP. I and I, I think that worse. ties into yeah. like just the the scrutiny of the whole situation, right? Like it was like the the microscope was on the Sixers from the moment that he got reported out from the Nuggets, right? And then that whole week leading or after that, they were like, "What's he doing?" And it was like and the same thing. I think the pressure of the outside world just kind of collapsed inward a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, well, he looks good enough to move around in a pregame warm-up. He can play, but I'm sure a shell of Embiid is still better than most people. Yeah. But it's also <laughs> putting him in a very high-risk situation, right. which, unfortunately, we hit the risk, and we didn't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, crapped out. Yeah. Yeah. That, that kind of, not to get too off-topic, but I always, I always think about the shared decision-making with play, not play, when it comes to talking to your athletes. Right. Yeah. Right? So you've got – the past MVP of, uh, of the NBA, yeah. mm-hmm. Meniscus Tear, wants to play. Right. Team position, <clears throat> you think, yeah, you're not looking that great. Your knee's a little swollen, you're tender, you're not moving very quickly. Right. So pull him and yeah. tell Joel Embiid, like, you're, no, you're out, you're done. You're not playing. You're not gonna get your, like, yeah, right. yeah, you're not going to get your 65. <laughs> right. Right? And there's pressure, your, like, it's I'm, like, I'm sure, from the entire organization. Yeah, right? to, like, get him, to get him in. Yeah. Right? So that's a that's a... Not an enviable position, not at right? all. Because you're, you're, and it's a minute. You know what you're dealing with at that time, right? And I'm sure, like, again, we don't know this stuff, but that individual's probably like, why did your knee get rolled up on, right? Because right? Right. it's not a non-contact oh, pivot. It's, it's, it's not. It's not an <laughs> extension. It's not an extension of the tear. The right. tear is the tear. It was yeah. like that yeah. when he started. But right. now he's got this other thing going on, right. and it's just it now it snowballs into a much bigger issue. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a it's a I don't know not not a position I would really envy. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. It's a nice spot to be in, and you know, a lot of the time to to, to be the doctor, to be involved, and be taking care of some of that stuff. 
Sometimes it's not so <laughs> yeah, nice. Not, <laughs> yeah, you make the hard right decisions, right? right? Like, uh, right. it just gets tough in those situations too. And I think, on top of you know, we, we keep alluding to like the MVP race, but I think with this NBA rule, I didn't really look into it that much. But I think the 65 game rule has a lot of play too financially for these guys of like postseason bonuses and other things like that. Because I read a little bit about that, and there's some other. Um, higher name profile people who like, missed a bunch of games. I think Devin Booker from the Suns is one. Right. And if he doesn't play a certain amount of games, he misses out on a significant chunk of change right. for them. And it's like you have all these factors pulling into this decision now where you have to play because the NBA is so like, yeah. you got to play the majority of the season. And I get it. I, right. I totally get it. Like They're selling their product. Right. They want their stars out there. Yeah. So I'll, I'll throw a question out there then. Do you think, I, I guess I'm going to bias it with the way I ask it, but do you think that there's any any possible chance he plays at like four weeks? I think it is is small. Yeah, I would I would agree because I think now like you already you already hear the backlash of like all the decision making that was made right and it yeah. kind of didn't pan out too well. Yeah. So like you should probably play it really conservative and safe going forward. Right. right? Yeah. Like I, I think the how well they play over the next you know thirty day stretch will somewhat impact that decision a little bit. It'll be a factor. I also think that kind of best case scenario, like, you know, we've all done the surgery, we've done the meniscectomies, and um, like two weeks later, that person looks back to normal, right? Yeah. But it's not everybody, right? And uh, I'll usually tell people a month, let's like like young athletes, expect about a month. We'll get you back in about a month. And sometimes it's a little bit sooner, maybe three weeks. Sometimes it's a little bit longer. He's not that anymore. No. He, first, he's he's a huge individual, right? right? He's just, just massive man, and he's had multiple knee injuries and now multiple knee surgeries, and and you know we forget he was drafted in 2014. He's 10 years into it. I'm guessing 30, like like uh, I think he's 29 or 30 somewhere. Yeah, there. yeah. Which which is you know it's not all, but it's also it's not a kid for this injury. And with that, I'm sure his knees are older than 30. Like just, just you know, yeah, yeah just, exactly. physiologically, you know, even though chronologically he's, a, he's he's about 30. When that starts becoming a factor, it's almost never a month. It yeah. always takes longer. That's right. Revision and, that, and it's revision. Lateral. And if it was lateral, which <laughs> yeah. tends to take longer, like we yeah. were talking about, mm-hmm. tell us about that a little bit. Actually, you know, what if it were medial, kind timeline, best case scenario? Versus lateral, what, what, what do we normally expect yeah. in a good, healthy young athlete? That's the thing. That lateral always seems to behave worse, yeah. right? So I was looking in, in prep for this. Is there anything looking at timeline of recovery following partial meniscectomy in NBA players? Right. And honestly, I don't think that study is there. Couldn't find it. Right. right. But the best one that I found that I felt was mildly applicable was looking at a highly athletic population of professional soccer players. Sure. And they're looking at partial meniscectomy, medial yeah. meniscus versus lateral meniscus. Yeah, and see what. How do these guys get back? When do they get back? Right, yeah. because you're looking at sprinting, cutting, pivoting, you know, twisting, lots of directional change. I feel like it's kind of applicable athletic population. Medial meniscus, they're getting back around five weeks, right? Lateral meniscus, seven weeks, right? Right, and that was the average return to play time right. to get back to professional level. Professional soccer player. Now, Con- confounding things, yeah. right? Yeah. Revision. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right, makes a huge difference. Every yeah. every. Every paper we have where something's done in a revision setting, first of all, we don't even Much include more. it in regular studies because we know. <laughs> it's own little category. It, yeah, it's going to yeah. be out as an outlier. They <laughs> exactly. did so much worse. So, yeah. like, it, it, it's just, I don't know, seven. So, we're looking at normal lateral Humans? meniscus, oh, yeah, yeah. soccer player, right. partial lateral. It took him seven weeks to get back. Now, you're looking at NBA player, Joel Embiid, revision, right. lateral side. I, I just, I, and I, I think, think we're looking more like Just, like, the... the makeup of the athlete comparison right like again we, we're not gonna we don't have the study for it but the average soccer player size and force that goes through a knee versus Joel Embiid size yeah. and force it's like wait yeah. he's gonna have way more I think I, like last week I did like a very a terrible biomechanical yeah. calculation it's like 2,000 pounds of force goes into him just to jump off the ground yeah just through the knees it's, it's really like yeah. His meniscus probably looks like a banana. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just hanging on, hoping for the best. <laughs> and I think with that too is like I, to go back to what you said earlier of like it's going to depend on how the Sixers are playing. Right now they're fifth in the East, right? And it's like, oh, that's not the best place to be. I don't think we're climbing the standings without them. Nope. 
you got to hope we kind of coast and stay in the middle somewhere and hopefully can hold on to a wild card spot. But if in, the, in the next four or five to six weeks, if we're just stinking it up and there's no chance for us to get – yeah. Why? You just, pull the, you just pull it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What's even the motivation, right? Right. And right. then even from the team doc perspective, that's an easy decision. Oh, yeah. oh we're out. Oh. Yeah, you're not. You're not you're going done. back. Yeah. <laughs> Why not get this thing 100 percent better? <laughs> and just take your time. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Like you kind of did back in 2017. You know, like kind of yeah. take the time and get just get right, and exactly. hopefully kind of bounce back and have an injury for a year, which is a very rare rarity for Joel Embiid. Yeah. Le- Le- Kevin, last time you were on the show, we kind of went down the the little bit of the rabbit hole of like like some people are just injury prone. Yeah. And I and oh man, it's, like it's like this is it, right? Like that as good as he is, this is the knock. Every year we get the playoffs, and he's not a hundred percent, or mm-hmm. there's some injuries trying to recover, like something. You guys almost needed two sheets of paper. Right. His bullet pointed injury list. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. No joke. Yeah, I mean, the half a sheet is just a timeline yeah. of injuries for Joel Embiid. Like, so, and, and at one point earlier in his career, like, he, he falls down all the time. Right. And then, the, uh, and I don't know if this is true or not, but they were saying, like, they, the, they taught him how to fall to, so he'd roll kind mm-hmm. of with the injuries, trying to prevent injuries. I can't say that's been a successful tactic if there's any truth <laughs> yeah. to that. Right. I, haven't, like, I haven't noticed it. What's that? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Yep, that. I don't fall like that. I, I don't fall, fall like off, that. But like, I, I don't. I hope I don't fall like that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and like, it doesn't. Like, as a fan, you're watching it, and it's like, oh, oh, oh man, oh, he's still falling. It's like it just. It's not good when a gigantic man like him's falling, no matter what. It's like a tree coming down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you said it before. It's like a redwood falling down the forest. Like right. it's a gigantic human <laughs> hitting the ground. I mean, it's yeah. got to be a lot of force up near the top yeah. as he. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it's just not a good look for the big guy to be. All this yeah. stuff. And it's just And, like, we've said it multiple times. And the big guys with the knees. It's just yeah. a yeah. scary thing you don't want to go down. Well, I mean, the big thing now, like you said, so he's 10 years in the league, yeah. right? Now he's got revision, lateral-sided, mm-hmm. partial meniscectomy. He's missing a decent – I mean, who knows? We're not in the surgery. But right. you're doing a revision on a tear. Yeah. You're, you're going to be missing some meniscal tissue at this right. point. Yeah. How much? We don't know. Yeah. But we do know the more meniscal tissue you take out, the more rapidly you accelerate arthritis, the higher your risk of developing cartilage damage in that compartment of your knee is. Right. So 10 years into the league, you already had a partial meniscectomy done yeah. seven years ago. Yeah. Now you've had your second. Like, So how many more years does yeah, that like, knee have in it before now he starts flaking off pieces of cartilage right. because he doesn't have a shock absorber over there? And who's to say that there isn't already starts or some some that's my big of, worry you know yeah. like you know, I would who, la- I, curious I would what those pictures hers. look like inside of me like, yeah oh man. for sure you know what yeah. i mean that doesn't look that smooth anymore <laughs> that's a little rocky there <laughs> so so with all this in mind first you know we, we kind of put out some predictions on whether we think he's going to get back in 30 days or not so the first question is do you think he gets back this year if they're What's, within contention yeah so within contention i think he's going to come back like Probably around, like we said, that seven, eight week mark. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I think it's going to take that long. Yeah, I think it depends on how the Sixers do. If there's a chance that they have chances in playoffs, and I think it's like a comfortable spot. Like if they're like one or two spots above that wild card, and they're going to make the playoffs, almost yeah. not guaranteed. Not guaranteed by any means, but and there's a hope for it, and he can be a boost. Yeah. Again, if he looks really healthy and he's healed up, then yeah, yeah I think it happens. But if there's any, like, if we continue this, we only won six or seven without him recently, and that continues, and we're just going to keep dropping and yeah. at that rate. Because here's the thing with it, too, right, is that you're not protecting a repair after this, right? So you got to clean yeah. up. What you're doing is you're managing inflammation, right? Yeah. Right. So right. If, if you're out of contention, you let the body heal itself. Right. Mm-hmm. Totally fine. We're just going to go through it. Just relax. We'll go through the rehab in a normal timeline. If you're playoff viable, right, or and you you really want to get back in there, so there's solutions, right? Yeah. That's where you can start. Okay, now we're eight weeks in. We can do like an injection, injection right, and right, see right. if we can just get the knee to calm itself down. Right. Knowing that, like, look, this isn't the best solution, but it's going to get you through you know, right. a couple games here where your knee is tolerable. So. There are options. If they needed to at that like, point. Yeah, more of like an emergency switch if yeah. you yeah. need to, but yeah. you don't you don't want to exercise it if you, if you don't need to. So then my next question is, do you think there's any possibility of, like, I think, I, th- I thought it was the front runner for the MVP until until this injury yeah. this year, right? So so do you think um, that th- that he has any more years after, you know, this, after this injury, um, regardless of how this year finishes, does he has any more years where he's in contention for an MVP? 
Oh, I don't know. Revision, revision. Th this being a revision knee scope does worry me a little bit. Yeah. Being right. ten years in. Yeah. I do. Ten years in. And I yeah. think yeah. that too is just like he was only really playing like three quarters every game. I and know. it's like yeah. so like the management load of management. his load management yeah. is actually pretty good right now. Yeah. Or yeah. was pretty good. And then still. And still yeah. you get hit with the unlucky stick and you get just a giant human falling on top of your knee that's swollen already and you're just like ah. So yeah. you're so you think yes or no in terms of a um, nice shot at the MVP next year or the year I, after? It's unfortunate, and especially as a fan to say this, but I think he's losing his window. Yeah. I think that window, I think he got it when he could, and I think it's just, I think when he comes back, I think the Sixers might even manage him differently. Yeah. Like, I think next year he, you know, they might space out those days off for soreness or whatever and just like, hey, man, look, we're going to make you miss instead of, what is it, we're going to get you to 67 games. you got two games of leeway. Right. We're going to take some days off just to make sure you're okay. Yeah. And then if anything else happens, yeah. I mean, like we said too, right? In that game, he took a pretty hard fall and banged his head really hard <laughs> I, with Draymond I, Green. I, I thought it was concussed. And yeah. and he, you know, the whole he went down holding his head and yeah. all that stuff. And I mean, yeah. granted, he ended up taking himself out. Then he fell down three times. I was like, yeah. but I don't know if that's normal. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's just like ah, but I, I think it's going to but be. They were, they were coach balls. They were coach yeah. balls. Yeah, it was very right, graceful. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, because like yeah. you said, like right after he got hit in the head, really, he went up to like kind of play defense, and he just did one of these, and then didn't leave the ground. He just went right down, like you just tell yeah. the knee just gave out on. Him. I, that, that was worrisome. That was yeah. a scary one. Yeah, that was really bad. And then okay, so then the last follow-up question along the same lines. So so it sounds like you think it's a little bit of a long shot for him to be in that MVP potential or whatnot. Do you think if you had to put a percentage on it, right, right, like like the possibility that. He's a shell of himself going forward from this point. No, I wouldn't say that much. Like, I, I think, very unlikely that yeah, that's going to be the scenario. Yeah, I don't think a, a shell of himself. And no. I would agree, and I think because his game is so multifaceted. Yeah. He's like, he's, he can do anything. Like, yeah. he can shoot the ball decent. I mean, granted, I hate when he shoots threes and he just keeps missing, but he can make them right. sometimes. Yeah. He can play really well in the post. His yeah. mid-game is his really mid well. mid-jump is great. Yeah, it's, like, great. So, it's, like, I think he's, like, has enough skill set to if something loses a little bit, even if like again, if he's eighty percent of what he was, game. he's still probably better than eighty percent of the league in that sense. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think he has a chance to still be a impactful player. Impactful player. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree across the board. You know, in the back of my mind, there was this tiny worry of like, could this be a weird route or something or other? And, mm -hmm. and if it did, I thought like, uh, this is his career. Clearly, it's not that. Clearly, that's not that, that's not what's going on here. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of agree across the board, right where you guys put each one of them. Yeah, I think time will tell, right? And I think um, we'll see. And I think we kind of hammered Joel Embiid's knee so much in the last two weeks. <laughs> so is he. Yeah. But yeah. with that being said, right? And I think it kind of ties in the sports medicine a little bit in the playoff contention, like we talked about. We are on the eve of the weekend of the Super Bowl. We're here, yeah. and who cares? We <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how we feel, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think it's um, interesting to see. Of like, we took a small dive into the injury report for the Super Bowl. Sure, a quick one. And again, it was just nothing really. It's all manageable things. It's nothing new. I think the biggest ones are um, for the Chiefs. At least they have Isaiah Pacheco, our hometown hero, if you will. Um, he's dealing with a toe and an ankle. Um, both of them are kind of, I think he's been dealing with them for a while, so I don't think it's anything new or anything to be concerned about. I think for the Chiefs, the biggest one is their uh, offensive lineman, Joe Tooney, um, with coming off that pec strain that he injured at the end of the season. Um, he was out last week to the AFC Championship game. How many weeks was that again? I think he's about three weeks out. I think he got, actually, I said NFC, I think he got hurt in the divisional round, got injured, was out for the championship game, and so he's got about three weeks to from that injury to now. Um, he was questionable going into the AFC Championship, didn't play. And then this week he's kind of reported as limited. Um, again, it's, it's tough with the Super Bowl because it's two weeks off. Right. So, like, that injury report really is going to get, like, fine-tuned probably till tomorrow. Right. And we won't good have point. access to that before. Like, Wednesday is usually that good day for all the information. But as far as last week goes, he was kind of a limited participant. He kind of got some things going on. And I think that's kind of the biggest injury, if you will, kind of looking into the Super Bowl, really. Right. Like, you need your linemen to do well. You got That starts everything. And I think that'll be a very interesting standpoint to see where, what happens with that. Thoughts? I think I think he'll Pec play. Strain three weeks. I think he'll certainly play. Obviously, yeah. with any muscular strain, you're worried about grades, right? right. We don't, we're not privy to what, what his right. is. Um, 
But the reality is structurally it's sound. It's just, can you tolerate the pain that you're dealing with right now mm -hmm. in order to execute at the level that we need you to execute right. at? So, you know, I think they're going to try him, right? Yeah. And see how he does. And if he's, if he looks good, he'll stay. Right. But, you know, if he's not able to perform, they'll pull him. But again, it's not like a, you know, it's not like a, a shoulder instability or, right. or a, like some sort of knee instability. They, like they, they can let him go and just yeah. test it. You think there, there's any way to, Brace that Not, to yeah, try thinking, to, like, yeah. yeah, putting like a solid or, or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, like, I don't know, and it, like as an offensive lineman, it's pretty. Inhibitory if you're right. yeah. kind of locked up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but think, not terrible. It's not yeah, like being still... like a cornerback or wide yeah. receiver, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, with those break like the Sully or the Sawa, right? Like, I think it'll limit him from overstretching that peck and getting caught back here or something. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, in, hopefully it all. He, he lives all here, here, right? He yeah. lives yeah. here, yeah. which is a lot of peck activation right. when you're here. Right. If he can manage it, and again, not get yanked back or just overly exert that muscle. Right. I think he could do it. And again, it's kind of like. I use the example all the time in everyday work. It's just like, if we were playing for the championship, if you're playing for the Super Bowl, right. yeah. and would you are. go? <laughs> you, you give it a shot. Exactly. Like, right. you give it a go. Yeah. And if, like, you know, and not to, like, if it gets worse or it gets re-injured, well, all right, all season's you tomorrow. All, exactly. all season's tomorrow, and we what, fix it. Like, I would be amazed if it's like, no, nah, it's still sore. Like, yeah. <laughs> Excuse <come> me? Yeah. <laughs> and of all, it's like, it's a little different, you know, mentality of a football lineman football player in general and then a lineman those guys are just in it they're savages these yeah. gigantic humans are just beating the crap out of each other the whole time yeah they just deal with those kind of things you know pretty pretty run of the mill for a lineman to not be 100 percent, especially when they're playing in the super bowl right like at it's this just, point right yeah. yeah i don't know my gut is that they do have a brace on them but even if it doesn't make any difference at all yeah right? just like, for, maybe for the psychological component right big factor yeah, uh, yeah yeah for sure for sure and what else? What else do we have injury-wise? Um, injury-wise, another one is pretty interesting for the Chiefs again. They have their running back, Jarek McKinnon, coming back up from a groin injury that he sustained back in week 15. So that we did the quick math. That was like six to eight weeks ago or so, give or take, yeah. um, which is a good timeline for him to kind of come back. And I think right. that'll be an uh, important offensive factor for them. <clears throat> Pacheco's been taking a lot of the brunt of the running back room, you know, and then Clyde edwards Lair. I don't think he's been doing that great yeah. as a pass catcher, what the right? What hell happened? And, like, he had so much upside, and then Pacheco came oh, in, whatever. But I think McKinnon throughout the year was kind of their pass catcher, and I think that's going to play a factor in the game when Pacheco needs a little break or whatever yeah. the case is. I think he can make a difference. And, I mean, he did he did last year. Yeah. You know, unfortunately against the Eagles and other things. So. I feel like he's underrated, McKinnon. Like, mm -hmm. he's had a pretty good career. He's always the number two guy. Yeah. And he's, but he's had a pretty good career. And, and just like you're saying, you know, I, I think uh, uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, his, his role really diminishes if, yeah. if McKinnon's on the field and able to do those things. It really becomes more the, the, those two guys running the show. Um, I think it's very tricky to predict return on mm -hmm. on that, right? Like groin injury. I know. Um, that's what, when I'm reading that, I'm like, what, what is it? What it could are, be what a hundred different things. What are we even talking things. about? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Groin and so, so you know, is this is this a you know sports hernia? Yeah, got right. Labral tear. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like, yeah. Or is it actually? Strain. Yeah. Was it actually? Yeah, 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 yeah. Adductor strain. Is, like there's yeah. you know multiple different things that go in totally different directions. Yeah. Right. And some of those things, yeah, absolutely, this guy's back and he's going to play great. And some of those other things, like not until he gets his surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so so it's 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 a really tough one to, to predict with the limited information that we have. Um, but I think another caveat, I just triple checked because I thought it was right, is that the last time this Super Bowl matchup happened, McKinnon was wearing the opposite jersey on the 49ers. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah so I that's think interesting. That's, that's an interesting, interesting little little tabloid yeah. there. Like, I think he, it's a, it's always interesting. I think in general, like the, the psychology. I don't of even those, remember him being on right, the Niners. Those former athletes <laughs> playing their former old teams or whatever, and they yeah. always do a little bit better. So yeah. you're playing for the it's biggest stage, and, you know, and now you're like. Could you imagine losing twice? <laughs> you tried the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be tough, man. <laughs> uh, that's got to hope that would really suck for him in that, in that standpoint for sure. So I think, what, go ahead. I was going to say on the other side of the ball. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I switched teams now. It should yeah. be good this time. Yeah. And I think with that being said, too, I think the only one that, like, again, I think they had a couple injuries for the Niners that weren't really significant. The biggest name, if you will, offensively would be George Kittle. Um, coming with a toe injury, and he was like, he was at media day and said, It's fine. He just, you know, it's just one of those things you manage. And again, like we talked about professional sports injury reporting, he's on the injury report. We know about it, it's yeah. like there. 
something that maybe could have happened with Embiid that it was questionable going in, you right. know it's on there, whatever. And it's easier to make those pools when the people are already on it and you call them a game time decision and you pull them last second versus not and what's so on and so forth. So. Right. Wasn't what happened to Debo like a couple games ago? Was it it's the a shoulder? The, the, uh, it was um, it was right before the end of the season, I think. Yeah. Was, and then he got that bye week. Right. And he came back and played. And like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Yeah. Just, that could have been just I think a little conservative from his previous scapular fracture. Right. Right. So, right. That's what that's what they had said. That's yeah. Like, the, the sc- originally, they were saying that like like scapular injury, scapular fracture, yeah. and then, then, and then like, a few days later, no, it wasn't. It's not fractured. Well. He got hurt early in the year. It was an IR. He missed a couple of weeks um, right. with the scapular fracture. Came back, injured that same shoulder, and then they didn't say anything else about it other than it was not fractured. If right. you looked it up, it was just... It was very strange. Yeah. They were just blowing up the not fractured. And it's like, it's just kind of one of those things that you don't really see too yeah. much. Or it's like, you get a shoulder injury, and I'm like, oh my God, you just fractured your scapula. It's not like the yeah. first thing on my list of things that I'm checking for. Right, uh, right, right. I mean, you know what's one was a panic? Yeah, like a sca- scapular fracture is like a motorcycle injury, not right, a, not a right. sports injury. That's yeah. like a rarely, yeah. yeah. Like that's a that's a pretty unusual one for yeah. sure. So that one was kind of fishy, and like we, I think we speculated a little bit. It kind of looked like a little bit of head neck involved, maybe like yeah. a little bit of a stinger kind yeah. of deal, and they were which you can the, turn it. I think you can away. cover that up and say shoulder injury, and you, know, you, really add, you know, <laughs> and then let it go. Right, right, right. right. Close <laughs> enough. It's the Close groin enough. of the arm. <laughs> <laughs> something up there. Don't worry about. I it. think that's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, and I think. That kind of wraps it up. And I guess, well, let's end with this. Um, Super Bowl prediction. Who you guys got I winning? I knew that's where it was going. Even though I don't think they looked as impressive as I thought they had looked um, through the majority of the season. Uh, and even though Kansas City has really come on strong, I think, in the playoffs. I'm going to go San Francisco just as a team. They just so they looked so good. They looked very mm-hmm. tough. Um, and, and Kansas City has played phenomenally. But I do feel like there's still a few holes uh, on, on, on that team. So I'm like, uh, if I, I have to predict, I'm going San Francisco. I'm going KC. There you go. Yeah. Contrarian. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> I agree. I just think Mahomes on that stage. I think he's real. I mean, it's they, true. I agree. There's they do have some holes and they don't look as dominant as they have yeah. in the past. Right. But I think I think Mahomes in the Super Bowl, he's gonna I, shine. Yeah. So I kind of want to see the 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 Mr. Irrelevant story play out and then in yeah, the Super Bowl. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's the, like the the only like storyline I can hang on to. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think. Um, Oh, you're not a big T Swift fan. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't care. I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Like, like, like. I think, I think she's just, super talented, and like, all right, she's dating a football player. Who cares? Uh, like, it's, I it's, think it's just the media is just forcing it down, like sure. in your face exactly. all the time. Right. Like, all right, we get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it woun't be a thing unless they made, made it. A thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's 100 percent a thing because of it. Um, I'm pretty in the undecided. I think it's going to be a good game, but I might lean towards San Francisco because mm-hmm. I think. The Kansas City defense is going to hold up. I right. think that's going to be the X factor. Although they've been good, that's the not yeah. one of their knocks all year. Well, I they've think been good in the playoffs. We didn't talk about it tonight because he doesn't have a chance of playing. But I'm pretty sure one of their defensive players tore their ACL last week. Yeah. So that's going to be a big hit. That's a long shot. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> big big shot, right? Yeah. Like, um, so Put I think those, those yeah. little things might add up, and you know, just you're going to have a, someone filling that position who sure. hasn't played that much all season. You yeah. might make those silly mistakes. Get a bad penalty when it really counts, or yeah. you know, I mean, even last year with the Eagles and the Chiefs, Mahomes played with like half an ankle, and he still did really well. And you know, um, when it matters, he ran his butt off with that bum ankle, no matter what, and he still made. It. And I think that's what ties into what you said of like, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure there were some medicines involved. In oh that yeah, ankle. <laughs> some, some numbing assistance. agents or something along those lines. <laughs> I don't Again, think, I don't think he knew if he had an ankle. <laughs> right. He didn't feel anything. He was running on air the whole time. He felt like he was just on clouds. <laughs> no, and I, I think it'll be interesting. And um, I think that's what we got for the night, folks. Sure. Yeah, I think man. we're good. Yeah. Um, so before we go ahead and close out our tab, folks, we just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. How about Frank's beer? Oh, oh yeah. Before we go any farther. Yeah. Freaking we did. A, we were all sipping on a mango habanero sour tonight, Holy which crap. was phenomenal. It's ridiculous. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. yeah. And so with that being said, Sourfest, May 18th, 2024, here at Total Turf Experience in the back parking lot. Come and have a great old time. I can't express enough how much fun I had last last year when I came out here. We may um, be recording out there at some point. We may be having a live recording outside um, during it, and have that'll be a special episode for us. It'll be a lot out. of fun. Yeah. See how that goes. A quick shout out to our friends at Protect It. Protect It is a custom bracing company that allows sports medicine professionals to have unprecedented access to 3D technology. With a quick 3D scan of your iPhone app, you can have a custom fitting brace arrive in as little as 48 hours. 
Protected is a tool that should be in every athletic trainer's toolbox. Learn more by heading to their website, www.protect3d.io, or downloading the Protected app in the App Store. The Energy Lab, the region's premier sports performance center destination, located here in Total Turf Experience. As mentioned, Neck of the Woods Brewing Company. And lastly, Timber Reel Productions, helping us put all this media, sound, and video together for everyone out there. So give us a follow on Instagram and YouTube, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.